me so close And I don't wanna take a trail in the world But I gon' love you Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you the world of what I've got The fancy finds, baby, I have not It's gonna love you My Uncle Buck, as we called him, was a 5 foot 10 ball of hot smoking crazy. I remember my dad telling me the kind of things that his young brother did as a kid, and it just amazed me that someone could be so reckless. Example, my grandfather was a home builder. My Uncle Buck, at 6 years old, would climb the framing of the houses all the way up to the peak and hang upside down and talk to them. A 6 year old. 25 feet in the air dangling from his legs only thing he's holding on to is a 2 by 4 and it didn't matter how bad they beat Uncle Buck he just kept doing crazy stuff then when he was a teen he ended up having fights with these guys they're 20 24 years old he got beat up stole a car went back and ran over two of them with a stolen car and beat the other ones with a crowbar so when I was 18 years old and my parents told me I would have to stay with him for a few days while they were out of town I was terrified, and rightfully so, because they dropped me off at his house, and the dude's place was a mess. Dirty dishes in the sink, molded food in the refrigerator, beer cans all over the place, and he stayed drunk all day long. His environment was the complete, total, polar opposite of what I was used to, structure and order. So much so that I started cleaning his house up for him while he was sleeping. These events happened the second night I was there. I'm cleaning his kitchen and it's three trash bags that I need to do something with. Uncle Buck lived out in the country and I figured, listen, I'm just going to do what I saw him do the night before, which was he took the trash out, dumped it in a barrel, poured some lighter fluid, set it on fire and came back inside. Now, in my mind, if he was able to do that, I figured it was no problem. So now I'm lugging the trash bags out of the house. I take the first two out, put them outside in the barrels, go back in, grab another one, put it in the barrel, pour the lighter fluid, strike a match, flames fly everywhere. And then I hear noises coming from the tree line, which is no more than 50 feet away, that sound like chimpanzees in a freaking zoo. And I'm not talking about one or two chimpanzees. It sounded like 50, 60 freaking chimpanzees were right there in the wood line making screaming and angry at me for lighting this fire now imagine this i'm running full speed back towards the house the door is still open i go inside slam that door and as the door slams it wakes my uncle up he comes walking into the room and hears all the noise outside that's when he starts to dress me down saying what the hell did you do what the hell did you do and i tell him uncle buck the only thing i did was go outside and burn the trash Man, listen, his eyes are as wide as a can of peas. He turns around, runs into his bedroom, grabs a shotgun, and walks straight out of that door into the darkness, beyond that fire, right to the edge of the wood line, and starts to talk to the darkness, saying, hey, 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 I'm gonna need y'all to calm down. Understand, it still sounds like a freaking zoo out there. And he's talking, saying, hey, 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 that's my nephew. I'm going to need you guys to calm down. He didn't know any better. Y'all going to leave him alone. And they get louder and louder and louder. Then Uncle Buck fires that shotgun into the ground, and it goes deadly silent. And he starts talking. That is my nephew. He's going to be here a few days, and he doesn't know any better. I'm sorry for what he did but you guys are gonna have to leave him alone. Then he turns, walks back into the house, closes the door, puts the shotgun on the kitchen counter, lays down on the sofa and goes to sleep. Listen, I'm trying to get an explanation out of this man and he's not telling me anything. So I spend the rest of the night in complete and utter confusion. I don't know what the hell is going on. The next morning, he's up at 6 a.m., wakes me up and says, listen, we need to take a ride into town. We, fit, we drive 15 miles in the town to the market and he buys five bags of apples. Puts those bags of apples in the back of his vehicle, drive back, and when we pull up in the driveway, he says, listen, 
take these bags of apples, go over to that wood line and start throwing apples into the woods. And I'm saying, Uncle Buck, why am I putting apples in the woods? What's going on? He says, listen, I need you to do this and you have to do it alone. No matter what you hear or no matter what you see, just put those apples there in the woods. So now I'm walking around the side of the house with five bags of apples. I lay four of those bags down on the ground, open the first bag, toss a apple into the air through the trees and I don't hear it hit the ground. So I grab another apple, rear back like a baseball pitcher, throw it as fast as I can and I don't hear it hit the ground. And right about that time is when I'm starting to hear rustling coming from every direction. I'm starting to freak out and I'm remembering what he said, no matter what you hear, no matter what you do, throw those apples into the woods. But man, I'm not standing there throwing the apples one by one. So I ripped that bag open and flipped those apples right onto the ground, no more than 10 feet in front of me, and proceed to do that with the rest of the bags. Grab the plastic, pick it up, and run back to the house. When I walk into the front door, Uncle Buck tells me we need to leave the house for a little while. We will come back in 15 minutes. So we get in the car and just drive around in circles for 15 minutes. And when we come back, he says, follow me to the wood line. Now, I need you to listen to what happened next, because this is when I learned that Bigfoot was real. Because when we get to that wood line, we're talking about 50 to 70 apples are missing. They are gone. Not one of them are on the ground. And he says again, this is my nephew holding his hand up over my head. He will be here a few days. He does not know any better. Leave him alone. And then he tells me to go into the house. Listen, nighttime comes around. He tells me to take out the trash and burn it. I am scared out of my mind. He watches me as I walk out of the door and closes it, leaving me outside by myself. I only have one trash bag. I put it in the barrel, pour the lighter fluid, strike the match. The flames go up. I'm expecting all hell to break loose, but there's absolutely no noise whatsoever. So when I go back into the house, now I'm saying, okay, Uncle Buck, what the hell is going on? He says, don't worry about it. I'll explain it to you when your dad gets here. Well, that wasn't acceptable for me. I needed to know exactly what the hell was going on. So now I'm trying to call my parents to get them on the phone. I can't get them on the phone. When my dad finally comes to pick me up, him and my Uncle Buck are talking. And my Uncle Buck says, well, your son learned about the men in the woods. And the two of them start laughing. They're laughing like it's some kind of crazy inside joke. And on the way home, my dad proceeds to explain to me what the men of the woods are. He says these are what people call Bigfoots. And that that house has been in our family for a very long time. And that my Uncle Buck, because he was in and out of trouble and couldn't keep a job, was staying at that house. But prior to him being at that house, they tried to rent it out over and over and over again. And that the Bigfoots would run the people out of the house. But Uncle Buck was able to stay there because he has always been crazy. And even as a kid, that man would run through those very same woods where those Bigfoots were and it would not bother him. They went so much as to grab him and pick him up and he stabbed one of them in the hand. Listen, that's when I realized my Uncle Buck wasn't just crazy. This dude was off his rocker. He literally lives in a house surrounded by Bigfoots and he's so crazy he gets drunk and passes out and stammers around at night in the dark in the woods drunk come on man I'm like how in the world is this man a member of my family 